Welcome back. Yes, dinner's no good if you don't have an appetite. Well, David, we certainly had an appetite uh, last night. There was, you know, delicious kitchen talk, delicious desserts that you uh, mentioned. And I'm pleased to see you've got your apron on this evening. <laughs> I do. We're going to uh, do a little bit of uh, cooking about the word apron. And apron and its two close cousins. Now, apron actually uh, originally had an N in front of it and was napron. Uh, and it comes from the Latin napper, which is cloth. Um, but because of the uh, way that we say a word that starts with N, um, a napron, fairly uh, over sort of several centuries, became an apron. Um, and this is a, a grammatical shift where essentially a letter jumps the gap. And it's called metroanalysis, which is a very fancy word. Let's get back to aprons. Because not just apron, there's other two words that, uh, where this also occurs. Uh, the other is adder, uh, which originally was nadder. Uh, uh, this, this is a, a, the snake, an, an adder. That's right, Because we've got an adder here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the human calculator of Lily Cerner. That's entirely different. This is, uh, again, nadder used to be the original word, meaning snake in English and Old English, and then an adder became adder, an adder. You see, it is hard to say, and that's how that shift occurred. Now, the last one, which actually applies more to uh, my role here, is umpire. And that's a French uh, derivation from, if you like, a non-peer, non-peer. So a non-peer became an umpire. Because to be truly um, impartial, it's, uh, it's wise in this case that I don't know Paula and I, and I don't know Howard, that we're not friends or not even the same age is the, also the ideal, so that that impartiality is preserved. So a non-peer is very important part of being an umpire that used to be a numpire. <laughs> <laughs> the best person to be able to judge. That's right. Well, thank you very much, David. Pleasure. Let's have a look at our scores. Howard is now on five and Paula is on 22 as we head into our next letters game. And, uh, Paula, this time it's your selection. May I start with a consonant this time, please? Thanks, Paula. L. And another consonant? B. And a, and a vowel, please. I. Another consonant? G. And another consonant? N. And a vowel, please. A. And another vowel? E. And a consonant? P. And another consonant, please. And last letter, T. And time starts now. <laughs> How did you go, Paula? I got eight. Eight? Excellent work. Howard? Seven. Seven for you. Well, that's, that's good. Let's start there. Uh, plating. Thank you. And your eight? Bleating. Bleating. Great work, David. Yes, it is. And uh, obviously Howard's uh, background in the hospitality industry <laughs> comes through beautifully with plating, which is not to say Paula is uh, one given <laughs> to complaining. Bleating is perfectly fine. And also an anagram of tangible. Another eight there. Very nice work. So eight points to Paula. More letters now, and uh, this time, Howard, you to choose. Lily, could I please have uh, a vowel to start? Thanks, Howard. A. And a consonant. S. And a vowel. U. And a consonant. L. And a vowel. O. And a consonant. H. And a consonant. S. And another consonant. Please. C. And a vowel. And lucky last, I. Time starts now. Did you like that mix? 
Well, I got six. You got six? Well, that's very positive. What about you, Paula? I also got six. Let's start with yours, please. Slouch. And yours, Howard? Uh, my word was shoals, as in shoals of fish. Couple of good ones, David. Good sixes. Uh, well done. And in fact, I only found a, a seven here that in fact relates back to our earlier topic of parties, and that's socials for seven. Very nice. And very nice scores for Howard and Paula. Six each. Let's leave the letters behind now and go back to the numbers again. And uh, Paula, your choice this time. May I please have two large and four small numbers, Lily? You may. Thanks, Paula. Two large and four small. And starting with the smalls, five, seven, one, two, and the two large, 75 and 25, and the target to reach is 121. Let's head there now. Paula, how close did you get? I got one, two, one. One, two, one, right on the target, very nice. Howard, that pen just went down oh, no. at the very last minute. How did you one, go? One, two, one also. You both got there, okay. Paula, your method first, please. Five times 25 is 125. Five by 25 is one, two, five. And then separately, seven minus one equals six. Seven minus one is six. Minus two. Minus two is equals four. Equals four. And subtract that from 125. 121. Very nicely done, Paula. Right on the target. How uh, was your method the same or different? Look, it's 25 times 5 equals 125. And then I... Sorry, I, tw 5 times 25? Is 125. Yep. yep. And then it was minus 7 gives 118. Minus 7 is 118. Plus 2 plus 1 equals 121. Plus 2 and the 1 is 121. Nicely done, Howard. A little bit of juggling with those available yeah. numbers uh, produced uh, a result right on target. Well done. Good methods for you, Lily? They were great methods. I have another one. Uh, OK. OK. Um, 75 by 2 is 150. Minus 25 is 1, 2, 5. We're 4 away, so 5 minus 1 is 4. Take that away, 121. Very nicely done as well. Three very elegant variations on the theme. And for Howard and Paula, they have produced 10 points each. So Howard's now on 21. Paula is on 46, just four away from that half century. As we head to our next break and another word mix for you, this time Drew Roof and the clue before Chapter 1. See you very shortly.